This is truly senseless gun violence. In an article posted today on Infowars.com by William Grigg of LRC Blog, the headline reads, Auburn, Washington resident Dustin Theo Harris was asleep in his bed on February 11th of 2012 when two armed strangers entered his room and started to give him orders. Understandably startled, Theo Harris reached for a flashlight. This prompted the two intruders to open fire. Theo Harris, who was still in bed, was shot 16 times, but survived. The assailants who shot Theo Harris were Detective Aaron Thompson of the King County Sheriff's Office and Corrections Officer Chris Rongin. They had arrested Theo Harris's roommate, Nicholas Harrison, an ex-convict who had failed to report for community supervision. The officers were searching his bedroom to find if Theo Harris had a gun, which would have allowed them to charge Harrison with a parole violation. They had no warrant or probable cause, and no gun was found. Since Harrison was already in custody at the time of the incident, there was no need to conduct a safety sweep of the residence. Basically, they crashed into this individual's house because they were looking for his roommate to see if his roommate had a gun. They already had his roommate in custody, but if they were to have found a gun, they would have been able to really uh, throw him in jail for a long time. As a result, though, they shot his roommate 16 times and that's because they broke in in the middle of the night and um, the guy reached for a flashlight um, the officers uh, were not convicted of anything wrong because their supervisor said that they were you know they were operating in self-defense they had to shoot him they didn't know if that guy had a gun but I mean they really need to use their head they're breaking into someone's house in the middle of the night people are in a deep sleep Obviously, they're going to be flustered, and they're going to reach for their baseball bat, their flashlight. They could have done this raid in the morning. They could have even rang the doorbell. You know, they weren't looking for that individual. They were looking to see if there was a gun in the house. So there you go again. And Mayor Michael Bloomberg, Pierce Morgan, um, that's one of the, um, you know, some of the shootings that occur from cops. It's not just, you know, bad people walking around shooting people. Sometimes the murders occur because of officers of the law. Maybe we should ban their guns. Now, in a much uh, lighter, lighter story, it seems that uh, Ethiopian kids, if you leave them alone with computers, really know what they're doing. And that's further proof that uh, kids are smart individuals. They're not dumb, despite the horrible test results we see in our public school systems. In an article posted by Device, it says Ethiopian kids hack OLPCs in five months with zero instruction. And the article says, what happens if you give a thousand Motorola Zoom tablet PCs to Ethiopian kids who have never seen a printed word? Within five months, they'll start teaching themselves English while circumventing the security on your OS to customize settings and activate, activate disabled hardware. Whoa. The One Laptop Per Child project started as a way of delivering technology and resources to schools and countries with little or no education infrastructure, using inexpensive computers to improve traditional curriculum. What the OLPC project has realized over the last... Five or six years, though, is that teaching kids stuff is really not that valuable. B basically, later on in the article, it says, quote, we left the boxes in the village closed, taped shut, no instruction, no human being. I thought the kids will play with the boxes. Within four minutes, one kid not only opened the box, but found the on and off switch. He'd never seen an on and off switch. He powered it up. Within five days, they were using 47 apps per child per day. Within two weeks, they were singing ABC songs in English in the village. And within five months, they had hacked Android. Some idiot in our organization or in the media lab had disabled the camera. And they figured out it had a camera and they hacked Android. So there you go. That's just a fun story that shows that kids have that electricity in their eyes. They want to learn and they can learn. Yet in the city of Detroit, only 7% of our kids can read or do math proficiently. Na nationwide, it's only about 40% of our kids can read or do math proficiently. Yet if you go to charter schools, proficiency rates are at 90%, 90 plus percent in the city of Newark. Uh, you're always hearing these poverty pimps saying that we need to throw more money at our education system, our socialized education system. In the city of Newark, their public school systems are doing horrible, yet at Robert Treat Academy, 
Uh, it's a charter school, proficiency rates at over 90%, and those are inner city kids, um, many of them who don't have fathers, and they're doing a wonderful job because you can fire bad teachers. The socialized public education system does not work, and if we can go to that image of that beautiful child looking at that app, I mean, he's just truly adorable. Just look at him. Kids want to learn, and they can learn. Again, charter schools do wonderfully, yet Barack Obama really doesn't, he's not aggressive on charter schools, and yet he says that he wants to see our kids have a wonderful education system. And you've got these poverty pimps continue to say that the answer is to throw more and more money at these failing public education system. We need a free market approach. School vouchers are what works. And now we're going to go to the joke of the day. I mean, the daily quote of the day. I say joke of the day because what you're about to hear is pretty uh, humorous. It's from Janet Napolitano, and she says, the last thing the Department of Homeland Security is about is infringing on anybody's constitutionally protected rights. Rimshot, please. Visit InfoWars.com and PrisonPlanet.com. When you're on the site, you can also tune in 24 hours a day to my daily radio broadcast. There's also a free iPhone app to listen to the syndicated radio show when and where you want. 